several times last week, I felt the uh, leading of the Holy Spirit to ask Amber Anderson to bring the word this morning. And, uh, and if you were at the conference uh, last Saturday, you will even amen even louder. It took some time to write this this morning, and it was just so easy. Amber Anderson is a daughter of this house. Wait till the end of this so we can get her up here, okay? Amber Anderson is a daughter of this house, a pure evangelist that moves in power, signs, wonders, the prophetic and apostolic authority is seen in the book of Acts. She is a true missionary to our city and our region. She is fearless, one of the bravest and faithful ministers of the gospel of the kingdom that I have ever known. Her fearlessness is matched by her generosity to those who are deeply broken, souls that many have discarded. She successfully operates as an agent of adoption for the kingdom of heaven. She is famous in heaven and she's famous in hell, causing the fame of Jesus to spread on the earth. She's an example to the lost and the seasoned saint alike fueled by an authentic love for the Father and for his children. So would you please stand and honor and welcome the woman of God this morning, Amber Anderson. Good to see all of you here with me, my family, your beautiful faces. Faces are just so much more beautiful when the glory of the Lord is upon them. It's so good to see you. God, I thank you for everyone here. I thank you that we are born of your spirit, God, that we walk by your spirit, God, that we hear by your spirit, God. I thank you for every son and daughter in this place, God. I thank you that you make their hearts ready, God, that you open their minds to receive your word, God, that we lay down our flesh, our emotions, all those things that operate that aren't in alignment with you, God, and we make ourselves ready to receive your word, your truth, and your life, God. I thank you that you give us spirit ears to hear, spirit eyes to see, and hearts that understand what you're saying, God. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Yes, discipleship, it's a great thing. And if you're not discipling somebody, start. I'm the product of discipleship. And um, had I not had leaders and people who sowed into my life, I'm not sure I would be where I'm at. And also, it's on my heart a lot, and my heart is set on fire for discipleship, and I think it's just really neat that God has connected me with His Girls Discipleship Program and the leaders. And, and the leaders are, they have great revelation of how important discipleship is. And so um, that's not what I'm touching on today, but the Lord just spoke that to me. So get yourself um, a Timothy yes. and be a Paul. Amen. 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 So with that, um, one of my favorites phrases in this season is actually quoted by Pastor Don, and it's, Jesus put the kingdom of heaven in every believer so every believer would be heaven on earth. 
and how much that rings true today and in this hour, there needs to be such an increase of his kingdom within us. Here we like to go deeper and, and we, we say deep, you know, calls into deep and what are the deeper things and how do we go there and what does that look like? Because we release the kingdom as we go and we're trained here and we're taught here about praise and worship, about praying. Uh, we're equipped with all these tools that the word gives us on, on what the kingdom looks like within us. In the kingdom of heaven, it has a glorious sound. There's angels who swirl around the throne crying holy unto the Lord. There's a sound, there's a vibration and it's a beautiful sound. And even science shows that sound is active. It does things, it penetrates things. It goes into the atmosphere. You can look it up, what does sound do? Look at the scientific side of it, that it does something. And God's word is alive and it's active and it goes all the way to the marrow and it stays alive and it stays active within us. So if we know there's sounds that are active from the kingdom that we release into this earth. So I'm here to talk a little bit of some sounds of heaven that are released through us. And in Psalm 47, clap your hands all you nations, shout to God with cries of joy. Shout with a voice of triumph. So it shows you that you make these sounds, these noises that are in alignment with the heaven. We clap our hands. That makes a sound and a vibration into the atmosphere. We shout. We, we cry out to God. We lift our voices up high. All that sound goes into the atmosphere and it affects the people around us. Yeah. Yeah. Psalm 144 says, praise the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war. That's pretty powerful. If he trains our hands for war, what does that look like? We lay our hands on people, we pray for people. We, we lay our hands, we raise the dead. We clap our hands, we make a noise. Our hands are trained for, trained for war. We raise them up high. We praise our creator, our father God, Jesus, with our hands. They're trained for war. Because this earth, there is a battle for souls. There's wars going on all around you. But he trains our hands for this time. So we thank you, God, that you, trains our, you train our hands for war. Another sound is when the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts came upon them, they started speaking in languages, in these beautiful heavenly tongues, this sound that goes up to heaven, that releases in the earth, that prays things that we don't even know. So that's another sound, and, and we're equipped with that. The Lord always equips us with these sounds of heaven. He's, he's such a faithful God in equipping his, his children, the saints, the ones who say, I'll go, I'll do. He equips us. He makes us ready, and he does all these things. And, and the word of God is alive and active. The kingdom is alive and active. We don't just read the word and go on our way. It's action. We have to be active in these things. Fire, when we sing about the fire and the revival, that's not passive. Fire is not passive. When have you encountered any fire that's passive? Fire rages, fire burns. Fire engulfs, it consumes. We are not a passive people. We're filled with his fire. The Holy Spirit is likened to fire burning, shut up in our bones. That should do something internally to the ones 
who are believers, who walk by his spirit. His spirit is likened to fire. Just remember that fire is not passive. Fire is not passive. All right. Our hands are weapons of warfare. They pull down strongholds. They pull down strongholds. We lift each other's burdens with our hands. We put anointing oil on each other with our hands. We baptize people with our hands. Yes. Everything has opposition in this world. And so when I see something going on, I ask the Lord, what, what does your word say that, that will counter what's going on? Well, his word says, if there's mourning, we, we declare the oil of joy. With our hands, we lay on each other and declare his oil of joy be poured out because that's what counters the morning. If you see somebody full of fear, you say, God of perfect love, fill them up, because your word says that your perfect love casts out all fear. We have to say these things. We have to activate these sounds as we go. We can't stay silent in this hour. We have a job to do. We have to release this kingdom of heaven as we go. As we go, wherever we go, we're speaking, we're singing, we're praising, we're laying hands on. We have to be an active participant of what the Lord commissioned us to do. We have to be active in this. And here in this building, as we pray, as we worship, we have to be active in that. No more passiveness. We have to stand up, rise up, and take hold of what the Lord has for us. So there's an opposition, and we are the counter of that because we are ambassadors. We carry God's truth, his life. We carry those things. When when there's spirit of heaviness, we loose the garments of praise. We praise when there's heaviness, and we watch as that heaviness is broken off the people around us, and it just lifts. You can can even see it in the natural. With your own eyes, you can see that heaviness just lift off of somebody when the garments of praise are loosed upon them. So we continually go to God's word. We are the counter attack. We are. When, When the enemy is attacking the earth, in, in, in the people of the earth, we are the counter attack to that. We, we have to rise up and be firm and be strong and not be passive and not keep our mouths shut. We have to be active when we see the enemy attacking God's people and the people of the earth, the ones who are in darkness that need salvation. We are the counter attack for everything that the enemy has in store, and that's a glorious thing. Yeah. So another sound is when God's people join together in unity as one. This is a corporate thing, and there needs to be be more corporate of this. The walls of Jericho, if, if you go to that story, they were obedient to what the Lord was saying. They were obedient. And it, it, wasn't, it wasn't the sound of their voices that actually took the wall down. It was their obedience to the Lord that took that wall down. But they joined together with one voice and shouted out, and those walls came down. Together as one, releasing the kingdom of heaven breaks down the strongholds breaks down those walls of oppression, breaks down those walls of bondage. It's important that we're all here together. We've grown together. Most of us know each other for a long time, and we've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly, you know. There's a vulnerability that we need to allow ourselves with one another 
We can't let pride, we can't let arrogance, we can't let mindsets and the way we think uh, we're supposed to look or behave or act. We come together and we release the sound into this earth together as one, and there's power in that. There's mighty power in our voices becoming one in this earth and releasing all of the sounds of heaven together. We were created in his image and his greatest desire is to communicate with us, to commune with us. He wants that dialogue. He speaks to us in so many ways and he wants us to speak back, to communicate. And a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't understand that this is a back and forth thing. Communication is not one side. It's a two-sided situation. And if his greatest desire is to communicate with us, to speak with us, that lets us know that our voices have power. The sound that comes from us is powerful if God created us to communicate with him. That's powerful. The whole word is our Father communicating with us. This whole word right here, everything about it is Him speaking to us, showing His love. It's a, some people say it's a love letter. It is. But the thing is, is, is He wants the communication back. He wants us to talk to Him. He wants us to actively do the things that He's equipped us to do. So there's a sound within us that we release. Sounds that move heaven on our behalf. Heaven moves on our behalf when we release these sounds into the earth. And the Holy Spirit, he's deeply and intimately involved in each one of our lives, intimately, deeply. God's spirit is so deep within us, it's the deepest place of us. The spirit of God gave us his very own spirit. God himself gave us his spirit. Try to wrap your mind around that. You can't. All you can pretty much do is just really enjoy it, you know? Because the more you think about it, the, you can't. You can't come to that place of full comprehension of what that means. God says that he loved us so much that he sent his son to die for us. And after his son left this earth, that would be the most devastating thing to be on this earth without a part of God residing with us. And he knew that. He knew after that time he was here, when people formed this relationship with him, that if he just up and left us, we'd be abandoned. We'd be feeling rejected. We'd be lost and broken. So what did he do? He left his spirit for us. And not only did he just leave it here for us, he left it here to enter us, to be alive in us, to, to like communicate with us every second of every day of our lives. That is such great love, such great love. And if we can go deeper in asking, what does that look like? What does that look like, God? Because that's pretty deep. That's heavy. Your spirit is living inside of me. That's the greatest power in the universe living inside me. That's the creator of the universe living inside of me. I'm not a powerless person. I'm not. And if I'm not a powerless person, what does that mean I get to do? A lot. So so, so much. It's unfathomable the things that I get to do 
but the Lord reveals those things to me as the time comes in every situation that's presented to me. He is so faithful that when I lay down my own thoughts of what's going on, and when I lay down those exalted emotions, I, I don't want to be an emotion. I don't want to be a person that's thrown to and fro by my emotions of what I'm witnessing. I want to stand firm. I want to ask the Lord, what are you doing right now? What do you want me to do right now? I can look around the earth and I can get emotional and I can let my emotions lead me into these places that I'm not even supposed to go. So I stop and I ask the Lord, let my flesh go down and let your voice rise up. Let my exalted thoughts, my opinions opinions that's another thing my opinions that are formed that don't line up with the heavens God let my opinions go down and you minister your word to me right now that's something that we should all practice even in those heated moments in those moments where people are looking for a response like a knee-jerk response we wait upon the Lord and he is always faithful to let us know what he wants done because like pastor said we are ambassadors what do ambassadors do they go and they show and they're a living example of of what they're representing and we're representing the kingdom Amen. that's really really important so I like how in this place, that kingdom life, ever since I started going here, we always talk about the deeper things and we always actually go there and it's uncomfortable and sometimes it doesn't feel good. Um, sometimes it doesn't even look pretty, um, but I've done that here and I've done that with others. And it's important to do those things with others going deeper because there's deeper places within the spirit. The spirit of God has such deep mysteries for us to unfold with him. He's constantly wanting us to go to those places with him where he can reveal those mysteries of what he's saying here to us. We can read it and read it and, and we can form an understanding, but there's this place when we actively participate in it that brings the greatest revelation and it releases what God wants in that moment in your life. And it's, it's, it's a great and beautiful place. So going deeper, the next sound that I'm going to talk about is a groaning. A groaning, it's a low rumbling sound as groans of roaring wind. Groaning spirits also, they groan in anguish, despair, and hopelessness. There's two different kinds of groans. You can see all around you in the news, everywhere today, there's this groan. It's anguish, it's despair, it's hopelessness. It's a groan for the Savior, the Redeemer. And it's deep and it's manifesting itself in a powerful way in this earth. It's a groan that's coming from the lost and the broken. And we can hear it. We hear those. It's loud. In fact, it's louder than you would think. And it's disturbing it should disturb us. It should move us. When we hear it, we, we, should, we should respond. Our God is 
a God of response. He responds. He doesn't sit back. He doesn't just watch and let everything be, but he responds to his children. He responds to his creation. He responded with Jesus. That was the greatest response of all to what was going on in this earth. So we have a God who responds to things and what's going on in this earth and with his people. I wanna bring up Exodus 6, 5. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel whom the Egyptians keep in bondage and I have remembered my covenant. So there's a groaning of people in bondage right there. People who are in bondage and oppression, they groan, they groan loudly. They groan loudly and violently. They don't know what to do with that and they cry out in so many ways that, that looks horrible to us. And if we don't seek and actively pursue walking by God's spirit, our love will grow cold. The word says that the love of many will grow cold. But if you have Christ in you and you walk by his spirit and he, his spirit himself is love, our love won't grow cold. That's important. Exodus 6, 9, so Moses spoke to the children of Israel, but they didn't heed him because of anguish of spirit and cruel bondage. They couldn't even, they were like paralyzed by it. They didn't, they didn't heed anything Moses said. The, the spirit of bondage and anguish was so all-consuming and overwhelming to them that they, they couldn't even respond to what the Lord was saying. They couldn't even hear Moses with the message of, of what the Lord had for them. That happens when, when there's a spirit upon people, their ears close and their ears are shut but it's the spirit of God that breaks through those things when we come into right alignment and we have the right response, the response of God to those things. The spirits groan. They groan in anguish, despair, and hopelessness. The earth groans. Groan also means to sigh, to be oppressed or afflicted. Our nation is groaning so loudly. So what, what does that look like on the other side? Like I said, there's a counter for everything. When we encounter the groans of, of the earth, when I'm out there in the streets and I, I hear the groanings and, and the rumblings and the crying out, how do I respond to that? by the Spirit of God. And there's a groaning in us that looks different. There's a groaning in us that some of us may have encountered already as we worship, as we pray. There's this groaning, this stirring right in the center of us. It goes deep, just like, just like how deep it goes with the lost and broken. That's a deep groaning. Our groanings also grow deep. Romans 8.22, we know that all of creation has been groaning with birth pains right up to present time. Not only that, but we also, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within, within ourselves eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we, we were saved in this hope. So there's a different groaning inside of us. 
And some of you may feel it rising up. It's a different place than worship. It's a different place than crying out. It's a different place than speaking in tongues and and that, that place that we go to together on a regular basis. This is completely a different place that the word talks about. It's much deeper and it's actually a hard place to go to It's a really hard place to go to because it's undignified. Because if you've ever heard a groan, it's not the most pleasant sound. And in fact, the first time it ever happened to me was in worship. And I had people all around me and I'm praising and I'm worshiping and I start crying out to God the things we were singing. And then all of a sudden, I wasn't singing. I was groaning. And I was making noises. And it, was, it didn't sound angelic to me at all. But it was deep. And what I had to do was lay down my pride, lay down what I thought I was going to look like or sound like with these sounds coming out of me because I wanted more. I wanted to go there because I knew it was the Spirit of God navigating me to this place, this deep place. So down to verse 26, likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses for we don't know what we should pray as we should. We really don't sometimes. We pray in our own understanding. We pray in our flesh. We pray what we want to happen. We pray according to how we think it should go. Yes, we know the word. We can see what's truth. But a lot of times we pray in how we think it should be. But when you go to that deep place with the spirit where there's no selfish motivation where it's none of you in all of his spirit there's this thing that happens the spirit himself makes that intercession for us and when it's god's spirit interceding guess what's going to happen the right thing Not what we expect, not what we think, not any of those things, but when it's the Spirit of God himself interceding within us, the all-knowing God, he knows everything. He knows his plan. He knows what he wants for his children. He knows every detail. And when you have that inside of you speaking out and crying out that's the deepest intercession that you can go to the very deepest the all-knowing God groaning out of your body that's powerful that's powerful and that's mighty And we need to go there because there's a groaning in this earth that's not of God. And we have to counter that with his spirit that groans within us. So why doesn't that happen all the time? Like I said, it's not pretty. It doesn't, in in the natural, it doesn't sound pretty either. When you have Sarah up here playing angelic worship, with her beautiful voice, and you're off to the side making these noises that sound like a dying seal sometimes, people are gonna look at you. And then of course, you start thinking, well, what do I look like? You become self-conscious. You become all those things in the flesh. But when our flesh is weak, the spirit is willing. 
And the Lord has just been ministering that to me this week, that place, not just this week, it's been weeks, to this, this place of crying out with him and letting him doing it. Because I've prayed all I know to pray over these circumstances. I've prayed everything I know to pray over every girl in the street that I go to visit. I have this girl that the Lord gave to me about seven years ago, right after I met him. And I knew that she was going to be tough. She still is. She's very tough. She's very hard to come to the Lord and surrender. And I have prayed probably every word in this book over her life. I have prayed every revelation that the Lord has given me about situations. I've prayed even, even quotes that I've read on the internet that sound nice. I've, I've like recited it all. And now, when I pray for her, I allow myself to just groan because it's him praying for her now. So there's this groan, and it's deep. Second Chronicles says, if my people who are called by name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. What are some of those wicked ways? Our own exalted thoughts, our own vain imaginations of how things are supposed to be, what we think ought to be, how we feel like we should pray, how we feel like we should minister, even what we believe we know that God called us to do. I believe that God did not call me to stand up here on a stage with a microphone and talk to a church. I believe that this whole time, this whole time I believe that my calling was out in the streets. I will preach in a brothel. I will preach to the Mexican drug cartel. I'll preach in a liquor store. You name it, out there, I'll do it. But tell me that I'm gonna get up walk up some stairs, hold a microphone, have notes here, look at, at all these faces. Nope, I'm not called to that. But I am, and actually all of you are too. Yeah. His spirit comes and encounters even our own thoughts about who he is and what he wants us to do. Even our own made up minds and determinations and all these things. And, and we're pretty dead set that this is the way it is. We're pretty dead set in that. Some of you might say, that's not my calling. I'm not gonna get up there and do that. That's not my calling over there. Well, you might wanna talk to God a little more about that because I did and now I'm up here talking to all of you. Mm -hmm. That's what happened there. So if we turn from those wicked ways, and I know you hear the word wicked, and you think, oh, that's so harsh, just because I'm thinking like that, or I imagine myself doing something differently, but you know what? If it doesn't line up with the kingdom of heaven, it's not exactly good. So if we turn from those ways, then I will hear from heaven and heal, heal their land. This land needs to be healed. Everybody can see that. This land needs the Savior. This land needs the healing. And it's not all of them that need to turn from their wicked ways. It's us. It's us in our own thoughts and perceptions and where we refuse to go, where we refuse to go with him, where we don't allow ourselves to submit 
to what he's wanting to do. We have to turn from that. We have to lay those things down and turn from that because he will heal our land. It's a promise. He says so right here. And if you believe everything else, you need to believe that, that if we do these things, he'll heal our land. He let us know right here. So we turn from the exalted thoughts, mindsets, emotions, and preconceived notions. We turn from the pride of not getting down on our knees and crying out. We turn from all those prideful ways of what people will think of us, what we'll look like, what we'll sound like. We have to do that in this hour. It takes humility to go deep. It does. Because going deep, like I said, isn't pretty. When you're in deep water in the natural, it looks pretty violent. You're waving your arms, you're struck, like you're getting to the top. Like it's quite a scene when you're in deep water. And it's not the easiest thing to navigate. But when you do it, by the Spirit of God, something great comes forth out of that place. Because in that deep water, when you let go and let God, you float and you don't drown. You just float upon the water and you just breathe and you just be still and know who he is and your spirit becomes at rest in those times. So it takes humility to go deep together. Because when you go deep together, you're with people, they're around you, they're seeing you, they're hearing you, and you're very aware of that. And it's uncomfortable. You do, you do start like seeing yourself and, and start wondering what you look like. Even in praise and worship, people wonder what they look like. They do. They're so self-conscious that they have a hard time letting go and fully entering into that place. Why that's so is the enemy. Your whole life, the enemy tells you to look this way or be this way or you won't be accepted, to look this way or be this way or you're not gonna be loved. He has been coming at you since birth because of the war. There's a war between heaven and hell and that's evident and the war is for souls. But we know God's word and we know what happens we know what happens, he wins, he prevails. And in knowing that, if we know his word and know the outcome, the victory, then what's holding us back from doing those things? Our own thoughts, our own emotions, our own mindsets. It's hard to get vulnerable with each other. It's one of the hardest things that we, as a body of Christ, have a hard time doing corporately, but we need to do it. Praising together is amazing. It releases a sound in one accord, in agreement together, releasing the sounds of heaven, the angelic sounds of angels into this earth, praying together, that's mighty, that's powerful. All those things are such power and, and release such power here in, in the earth that we need to constantly do those things together as believers. But one of the things we need to be able to do is to be vulnerable and not care what it looks like and not to be self-conscious. We're in an hour where the believers in this earth have to do something about the position we're in. We need the greater, we need the more, we need the deeper places. Amen. 
His word says, let the priests, we're the priests, by the way. We're kings and priests. Let the priests who minister to the Lord weep between the porch and the altar. We need to do these things together. We need to cry out. We need to weep. We need to fast together. All those things that I've been trained to do here by this church, we need to do together corporately. And, and that involves this place with his spirit of going deeper. Ezekiel 21, seven says, and when they say to you, why do you groan? You shall say, because the news that is coming, every heart will melt and all hands will be feeble. Every spirit will faint and all knees will be weak as water. Behold, it is coming and it will be fulfilled declares the Lord. There's a groaning in us of the fulfillment of the Lord. It's a deep groaning. It's deep places. It's those deep waters. And I believe in this time, it's a place that we need to go to together corporately as one body, letting the Spirit of God intercede for what's going on in the earth. There's, there's that sound in each one of his believers. He wasn't just telling me that. This scripture wasn't just for me. That groaning isn't just for me. It's inside each one of you because if you are born of the Spirit, you have his spirit in you. And his word says right here that he does that within you. You have to allow that. You have to allow it. You have to submit to it. You can't resist it any longer. I know that there's something inside everyone out there. There is this unexplainable thing we can't exactly put our finger on it. It's like an anticipation. It's like a crying out. It's an unsettled place. And we don't know what to pray. We don't even know what to do sometimes. Sometimes we just do what everybody else is doing. And I think God wants his children to stop. Seek his face. Lay down those things that are hindering us from these deep places. And come together and do those deep things together. Because we are the counter of what's happening here in this earth. And if the groans of this earth are louder than the groans of heaven, it's gonna look devastating. It's gonna look so devastating for all of us because the groans of the earth and the people who are lost and broken are only gonna increase. They're only gonna get louder. And those groans are visible in action in the things we see and we're not supposed to get used to those things. We're not. We're not supposed to say, oh, this is just how it's going to be. Or this, this is what his word says it's going to look like. Yes, it's going to look like that. But we don't just sit there and let it look like that. Right. We have his power inside of us to rise up and take our positions as ambassadors of releasing the kingdom of heaven here. We have an obligation. We have an obligation to all of humanity, all the ones who don't know him, to do these things. We have an obligation to intercede for the lost and the broken, the oppressions, the bondages, the injustices here on this earth, we have an obligation 
knowing the heart of God, knowing he's the God who hates injustice, he, he hates it, oppression. He set the Israelites free. He, you guys know the stories, like all those things he did to set them free, that was wild. Like he moved swarms of locusts, like bloody rivers, like that's intense, very intense. Our God moves when things like that are happening. But the difference is, is he moves within his people now because his spirit is within us. Yeah. Yeah. So if we submit to the deeper places that the Lord has for us, and we say yes to that going deeper, I believe there's gonna be a shift. I believe there is gonna be a shift. This week, as this word was stirring up in me, I'm out on this farm, by the way, and it's wet and muddy, and my hair gets dirty, and so does my face, and I'm toiling in the dirt, just visioning the things that are gonna grow and the fruit that's gonna be on that property. And as I'm doing that, fire ants bite me all over my leg. And all of a sudden, I start groaning. And a sound comes out of me. And I'm like, whoa. I came to this place of relating with the pains that are going on this earth for just a split second, the crying out of his people who are hurting in agony and just so much pain that there's no other thing but to groan and respond like that. And it's a hard place for these people to be. It's a really hard place for all of creation to be is in a place of groaning in this earth. And so we need to bring the kingdom of heaven upon that groaning. We need to release the groan of heaven into this earth. We need to, to stand firm and allow these places when we come together to come out of us because it's the kingdom of heaven released on the earth that's gonna abolish this darkness. And we've been praying, we've been praising, we've been prayer walking, we've been protesting, we've been standing up, we've been saying things, but have we done this with the Lord? Have we gone to this place with his spirit within us where he says what needs to be said, where he releases, it's actually a heavenly sound. This sound that doesn't sound so pretty is a heavenly sound because it's God himself groaning through us. So it's another sound of heaven. And I just want to invite everyone. To join into that place. Together to allow yourself to be vulnerable to ask the Lord what that looks like, to ask the Lord to take you there, especially if you haven't experienced that place, because it's deep. You might not even know what it looks like. You may have heard it before in maybe some prayer sessions where these noises come out and you hear a sound. I hear it come out of Sally a lot. And I always wondered what that was at the beginning, but she used to intercede for me. Every time I would go out in the streets, she would just lay her hands on me and there would be this noise that came out. And I was like, what is that? She knows. She's been interceding for years. Some of these saints who have been in here, like the Annas, they know that groan. But a lot of us don't. So I wanna invite you right now. I know I was gonna be asked to preach for like an hour, 
but I feel like the Lord has said what he came to say through this message. So I want to invite right now everyone if you need to close your eyes if you want your eyes open it doesn't matter but encounter the Father right now encounter your Father right now in what he's saying about this deep place of intercession what he's wanting from his children in this hour, the place he wants to take you, the place he wants to take us corporately as one body. There's a stirring within you. It's deep. And I wanna invite you down to this altar. And if there's anything that he reveals to you or anything as I've been speaking that you know has been hindering you from going to this deep place with him. Ask him to 